versus Baldwin Park, case number 215, uh, civil uh, 4163. The city settled the case for 67,500. The third party <clears throat> jail administrator, uh, GEO, which runs the, the uh, jail for the city of Baldwin Park, paid 52,500 of this amount. The city only paid a total of 15,000 of the total settlement. So that's for the record. So at this point, I will go ahead and move for adjournment of the study session. That is my motion. Second. Second. Uh, any objections? See none, so move. All right, so at this point, I'd like to open up the, um, <clears throat> the Baldwin Park City Council regular meeting, January the 20th, 2016. The time is 7-16. Uh, uh, but before we get started here, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, anyone wishing, excuse me, sorry about that. Do we have Pastor Jackson? We'll kick it off with Pastor Jackson as an invocation. So I will ask all those that are able to stand to please do so at this time. And it will follow the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Father, we come in the name of the Lord, giving you praise, glory, and honor, and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for Baldwin Park and all those that are diligently working in Baldwin Park and the 60 years of anniversary this coming that is here, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, touching the city council, touching the mayor, and giving them wisdom and knowledge and understanding in how to uh, run uh, Baldwin Park, that Baldwin Park may continue to be a successful city. We lift up our police department, Lord, that as they are out and about uh, protecting and serving, that you will keep your hands upon them to keep them uh, protecting as they are protecting others. And th then we go into our school district, Lord, because we have our young people that th it's their future, Lord. And yet we have uh, uh, the drug addicts that are out there, the gangs that are out there, and we're asking you to put your hands upon them. We're asking you to put your hands upon the teachers and the guidance and the counselors to help guide our children in the way uh, that they shall go. And so, therefore, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. At this point, we're going to pledge the flag. Everyone, please place your uh, right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this point, Madam uh, Treasurer, uh, City Clerk <coughs> will take roll call. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Council Member Cruzabaca? Here. Council Member Susan Rubio? Present. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Monica Garcia? Here. Mayor Manuel Lozano? Present. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, I'll, we'll go ahead and uh, move to excuse uh, City Treasurer Maria Contreras. So that's my motion. Second. Second. Uh, any objections? See none, so move. All right, so at this point, I wanna, before we begin, I want to also close. Did we close on uh, Margaret Solanson at the last yes. time? We did, okay. I want to also <clears throat> close on behalf of uh, Mariana Lake, uh, the Upper San Gabriel uh, Valley director. Her husband passed away <clears throat> this past Sunday, so when the funeral services are pending um, for this coming Tuesday, Wednesday. I want to also thank uh, um, everyone as well. My father who had an opportunity to see me get reelected for the ninth time. He was the one, both he and his, my mom guided me to Ball and Park. Uh, passed away as well. So I want to thank all those that were tenants. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Cruz Baca, uh, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco, Councilmember Monica Garcia, and also Council Councilmember uh, Susan Rubio, our, our CEO, and all the staff members that were part of it. Thank you, Mike, and, and, and everyone uh, for being a part of it as well. So um, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being there as well. And also, Mr. Freud Mendoza, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I thank all those that were there as well. Um, all right, so at this point, I don't think we have any anyone wishing to close on anyone's behalf. Go ahead. Yes. I would, on behalf of a great musician and a friend, Glenn Fry, who passed away um, this past week after a battle with cancer. And I'd like to, wow. his, his music and everything will live forever. Thank you. We will close on, on his honor. Thank you very much. All right, so before I, uh, we start up in the presentation that we have, I want to let everyone know, if you don't know, this is the 60th anniversary of the City of Ball Park, which will be January the 25th of 1956. Um, so th we're going to have celebrations throughout the whole year. And I know a lot of us, some of us, have been here longer than that. And I believe Councilmember 
uh, Cruz Baca has been yes. here, right? Be, 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 that's right. Before, <laughs> before the city's incorporation. So. I was born before it was incorporated. Right, exactly. And I'm not too far behind it as well. So uh, not living here, but the age of the city. I just want to uh, acknowledge everyone that we anticipate in having various types of events throughout the year, of course, uh, kicking it off with the uh, today. And uh, I, what I would like to, us to know, I don't know if there's a, well, we have a whole year. Um, Cruz, uh, yeah, Council Member, you probably recall in a lot of us, there's a picture where it was taken right in front of these, the panoramic picture. It's got thousands of people there. Yes. When, what I think would be nice for the 60th anniversary, we could get that out or place that in the now, the old picture. I think it's from the 1930s. Someone told me that Clinton Nixon was there. I'm not certain whether that's valid or not. I don't no? know. No? Okay. I, I really don't or, know. Or, no, or not Clinton Nixon. He was on the waterboard. I forget his name. He's passed on. But um, I think that would Mr. be. Mr. Romney? Romney. Romney. Yes, Mr. Romney. Yes. Um, so for those of you who have never seen this picture, and I don't think we have one here, it's probably City Hall or online. Uh, it would be nice if we could maybe see if we could gather people and do that same picture that they did back in the 1930s, of course, prior to the city's incorporation to see if there's a probability for us to gather that amount of people or whatever the case is. Well, yes. I would yes. love to, since you're talking about yes. photo, yes. I would love to see if we could do it for the 60th anniversary and have it where we invite residents or whoever oh, okay. so that we can do another panoramic of yeah. of the 60th anniversary. Right, right. That, that's, yes. that's what I'm talking about. It would be nice if we could do that. So, and just maybe put it online. I think people would show up, maybe do it like on a Saturday or, or something and, and do another panoramic Fine. picture. So, yes. And also, you and I talked about this 10 years ago, and we missed yes. the opportunity when it was the anniversary. Um, the if, yes. 50th anniversary, you and I wanted to do a time capsule. Right. And we, oh, we right. missed it. So we were thinking that maybe it would be a great idea to have a time capsule on that Maddie, day as well. we could well. look into that time capsule. That'd be nice. Yes. Mayor, I'd Go like to on. recommend that we engage with the Historic Society yes. as we That's plan right. for this event. Yes, you're right. Uh, Mr. Bob Bimple uh, would uh, definitely, I'm certain, enjoy and assisting us as well on that particular area. All right. At this point, uh, Rosa, I want to thank you as well for coming on board. Okay. Rose Tam, wave your hand over there. Let's, wanna, let, let's give her a great hand. She's our new finance uh, director. Rose has been doing a lot of things behind the, behind the scenes, so now she's up front here. So thank you very much for accepting the position and uh, looking forward to working with you as well. Love those numbers. All right. Welcome. So, yes, welcome. All right, so at this point, we're going to go on the um, uh, proclamations there and the presentations that we have, and, of course, the 60th anniversary, which we've done. Are we going to cut that cake, Manny? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, hopefully the meeting won't be so long, so we'll get everyone a, a cut of this cake here. Uh, then we'll go to the um, uh, Oath of, of, of Office uh, for Students Commissioners. Uh, Oath of Office is for incoming students, Commissioner Luz Mercado uh, from Sierra Vista High School. Anthony as well. Do we have, are they both, are they here? From North Park uh, High School for Recreation and Community Services Commission. Are, is, are both of them here? Raise your hand if you're here. Okay, they're probably... Oh my gosh, this is the first meeting. Or maybe our acting uh, superintendent, they must be uh, at home doing their homework. It's uh, academics, okay. Oh, Mr. Sales, sorry about that. I didn't see you back there. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And Mr. Lopez as well from the Ball Park Unified School District, thank you for both being here. And Mr. Sales and, as well. And Mr. Who? Santos. Oh, Mr. Hernandez. Santos. Stand up, Mr. Santos. Just recently got elected. Now, now if, you don't know, if you don't know Mr. Santos and it's accompanied by his wife, if you don't know Mr. Santos, then you don't know the back seat of his vehicle when you were a kid because they used to pick up a, a lot of individuals throughout no, the city. But then you didn't go to school in Baltimore Park. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, excuse me. That's right. So thank you very much. How many years were you uh, with the district? 33 years. Wow. Okay. And well, the person that you work with, very good. Lillian Gonzalez, Hello. both of you. Yes, yes. All righty. Thank you very much for that. And, and best of luck looking, well, looking forward to working with, uh, with you in the joint ventures. All right. So at this point, so the students are. Bring it back. Okay, we'll bring them back. All right, well, the that's okay. They're, that they haven't been here. I know, that's right. They've been here at every meeting. So, so here we go. Is that Helen? Yes. Helen, last time I saw her was in D.C. Okay. You're going to sing? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so next one, we're, we'll go down to the 2016 Greater Los Angeles Homeless Population Count. This is very important. We have the rep here. Oh, come on up. 
We have two, two reps. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is David Dang with LASA, Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority. I am the Regional Coordinator for San Gabriel Valley. My name is Steven Sotomayor. I'm the Senior Policy and Legislative Analyst for LASA. Yeah. <coughs> you want to do it now? I just want to give a uh, quick update regarding the homeless count, which is occurring on Tuesday, January 26 at 8 p.m. Um, Baldwin Park's uh, volunteers numbers are, uh, are pretty pretty good right now. We're at 22 volunteers. Okay. Uh, we need uh, approximately about 10 more volunteers to conduct a, a successful count within Baldwin Park. Uh, San Gabriel Valley, uh, we have 100% opt-ins, so all the cities in San Gabriel Valley are willing to uh, conduct the count this year. You know, can you repeat the date and times? So we have a lot of residents listening. Maybe they want to participate. Can you repeat sure. that for the audience? Thank you. So we're seeking volunteers for Baldwin Park on January 26, 8 p.m. to uh, 11 p.m. to conduct a homeless count. A homeless count is, uh, uh, it covers the entire uh, census in L.A. County, and with that data, we produce and give, uh, allocate fundings to homeless programs that will end homelessness in their communities. Where is the location where they meet? It's at the Terry Mews Family Center. Thank oh. you. So the last time that you came and presented, I, I said I wanted to sign up. So please sign me up. Um, how do I, do I coordinate directly with you or? You can sign up at www.daycountwillu.org and uh, uh, click region San Gabriel Valley and uh, you can see the different deployment sites from there. Okay. And I was asked here to be today to talk about uh, different aspects of uh, what funding might be available and what's going on within the county of Los Angeles, the state, uh, for homeless services. And so, as many of you may be aware, recently the county conducted a planning process, which was a series of policy summits uh, that asked stakeholders as well as consumers to review and look at different programs and services that would be recommended to the county board of supervisors for implementation for homeless services. Obviously, lately the big push is towards permanent support of housing as the Department of Housing and Urban Development is looking at a sustainable and cost-effective method for keeping people in housing as they do that. And so a lot of the resources looking at that, rapid rehousing, but the county has made available quite a few funds uh, within the county budget for rapid rehousing as well as discharge, uh, as well as uh, also uh, bridge housing. And so those are some of the sources available and I think that probably the most helpful is if there's any questions. I mean, we could talk for quite some time about all the different programs, but perhaps if there's any questions of LASA or the planning process that I could be helpful. Uh, will you be bringing back a report so that we can hear after, the, after you do the count? Uh, will we get a report so that you can come and do a presentation as to what the areas were that you, that you went to and what the count is? Yeah, absolutely. We can come back with those numbers once the data has been put together, and uh, we can come back and do that presentation. Okay. I, I, I would appreciate that if you uh, coordinated with staff so that that way we see where we are more or less. Absolutely. Thank you. And just do us a favor. Can you please thank Supervisor Hilda Solis? I know that she's taken a very aggressive approach in combating homelessness, so please thank her on our behalf. Absolutely. Now, out of curiosity, so current, how many, I mean, is this um, a countywide mean or is this specifically Fort Baldwin Park? As far as? Uh, for, the, for the one you're going to have here at the Terry Muse Center uh, in Ballpark. Well, it's, it's, for Baldwin Park. it's just for Ballpark? Baldwin Park, yes. Okay. Do we have an estimate of homeless that we have here right at this point? I don't have that number yeah. right now. Okay. You know, all that all that uh, that number is available on the LASA website, which is www.lasa.org, and you can move in, you can see what the count was last year. We've moved to an annual count. Uh, oh, so this is normally it was on a two year cycle. Uh, we're doing it every year. 
And so the volunteers are especially needed to come out is such a large count for Los Angeles County. And so with more accurate data, it allows us to make better decisions on how funding is allocated, where needs are, and what type of services we need. All righty. Very good. Thank you. Jay. I have a question. Yes, so for as far as the city of Baldwin Park, are, are there any other items that you have asked us you know, to contribute uh, for this deployment center or you know, for the count? What, what else do you need just so that we can be aware of that and um, you know, make the requests? So I re, I've been working with Armando at the Terry uh, Family Center. Mm -hmm. uh, he did request to have a loss of staff available to run the site. He is the assistant coordinator. Uh, what we need in terms of the deployment site is maybe some snacks for the volunteers and water. Um, other than that, uh, volunteer numbers are high, and I think uh, we can um, cover all the tracks within Baldwin Park. How many volunteers do you expect? We have 22 registered right now. Um, I, I, I be, we need about 30. So. Can you tell me, uh, of those volunteers, are they mostly from the city, or are they outside of the city, from the region? So um, it's a mix. We have United Way. Um, also, we have the VA um, giving us volunteers. And we have the Freemasons and also other uh, agencies like VOA and New Directions signing up for um, all San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, let's see. And how many other deployment centers are in the area? We have about 24 deployment centers in San Gabriel Valley. In San Gabriel Valley, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, it's a very large effort. Um, so let's see what we can do about snacks and water. I'm sure that we can accommodate that, Manny. Um, and as far as additional you know, volunteers, I don't know, maybe we can put the word out, maybe staff. I don't know if they've been informed of the count mm -hmm. or just partner agencies that we work with. Yes. Yes. I know that some of the churches have already signed up. Yes. Some of the volunteers from some of the local churches because I let them know as well as myself. I answered your email. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I, I did your recommendation. I met with the, uh, the church and uh, they did uh, sign up for the, the account. Thanks. Any more questions? No questions, but at a later time, as was mentioned here, it would be nice to have a study session, and then we could see what the report is. You know, we could discuss um, kind of some of the demographics that are available on the LASA website, and we can talk about the services that are in the area and um, just really provide those resources to our police department and, you know, to our rec and parks and um, just really equip the city with some of those some of that information and resources. Absolutely, and at the council's pleasure, I would love to schedule a meeting with staff or whoever the council would like to have there to see how LASA can work more closely with uh, the city of Baldwin Park. I think that that's a connection that would be beneficial across the board, uh, especially with the count data coming out. Uh, it would be great to be able to talk about the programs that are occurring within the county, how we can advocate better on behalf of the region and the continuum, and, and to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. That's great, yeah, if we can do a study session and then kick off the conversation there, and then we can identify what staff would be most appropriate. Absolutely. Following up, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more thing, I'm sorry, if, if there is going to be a study session, I would, I would really recommend that we invite some of the churches again, because the churches, like I said, the last council meeting, are very affected by the homeless population. And I think that either the pastors or the assistant pastors should be available to, to hear what is available and what resources they have as well when they're reaching out to, to our homeless population. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's it for me. All right. Oh, thank you. We'll throw it out. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. I forgot to also mention the Assistant Chief, Los Angeles County Fire Department, uh, Mr. Jim Enriquez. Thank you very much for being here. And just to let everyone know um, that saying, si se puede, he's a product of Baum Park as well. Is it Baum Park High School, attendant? Okay. What are your graduate from there? Oh, 78 shots. I thought it would be 456. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. 
just trying to catch a birthday here. All right, 1978. Thank you very much. Uh, he is the actual assistant chief of LA County, uh, which overlooks the Baldwin Park Fire Department as well. So thank you uh, for being here presently with us. Before I forget, is that cake all cut up? Because we forgot to take a picture of it. So all 60 years went down the drain. <laughs> you did? Yeah, but we weren't a part of it. Would have been nice to have the audience in there. All right. <laughs> Hold on. All right, so at this point, um, see no further interest, we're going to go into the public uh, communication, but just want to let everyone know about the, if you're here with reference to the Wayne Manor, um, let everyone know that the, it, it's on the agenda for us to allow them to go through the process. So by, by state law, we have to, we're mandated to allow them to go to the process. This does not mean that they have been approved. If we don't allow them, then by default, they could just, it could just simply become the act, uh, allow them to just come in. So I want to let everyone know, and I know we've explained that before. So let me try my Spanish. Las personas que están aquí sobre la agenda del Wayne Manor, lo más les quiero decir yo claramente que están aquí hoy y se, y se va, vamos a hablar sobre, uh, sobre este tema. Pero les quiero decir claramente que esta decisión no quiere decir que el proyecto se va a hacer en la ciudad. Nomás es que nosotros, por, por la ley del Estado de California, tenemos que dar, uh, de, uh, uh, tenemos que um, dejar que el proceso continúe. Así es que es muy importante uh, para decirles a todos, así es que no es la decisión que se va a hacer hoy. Nosotros, miembros del de, uh, miembros de este concejal, vamos a tener la oportunidad de votar sobre si se hace o no se hace este proyecto, pero eso va a ser en otro proceso. Estamos, estamos uh, de acuerdo con eso. Is everyone, uh, so I just want to let everyone know, because I know some of you are going to speak. That does not mean, that does not mean nor give the authority uh, to Wayne Manor to build the project. It is a simple process that has to be followed. Tenemos que nosotros dejar que el proceso continúe porque es parte, parte de, 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 de la ley del Estado de California. So I just want to let everyone know. All right, so it still has a long way. En un proceso largo todavía. All right, so at this point, I will open up the um, public communication. Anyone wishing to speak, please state your name and address. You have approximately three minutes. Thank you. Ms. Lucero, good evening. Thank you. My name is Christina Lucero, 4202 Stewart Avenue, Baldwin Park, California. I am here. Uh, first off, Mayor Lozano, I do want to offer my condolences Thank on you. the loss of your father. Thank you. Um, I'm here as president of the school board, and I understand that this is just the process, but I do want to ask the council, the mayor, and Mayor Pro Tem to please understand the not just the revenue impact, right. but the negative part of that of having to have more police officers because the number of calls we will get will increase. The True. fact that you have people that have no, no history with a facility of this size. The promises that they made are unreasonable because you cannot require adults to take medicine if they choose not to. You cannot lock them in a facility unless it is court ordered. You cannot control their movements in the community. And even though they're gonna do fingerprint checks and all that, that doesn't help us if the person has not been arrested or convicted of a crime. It's only those people that will not be included. And my concern is also if they kick out a resident from a 90 bed facility, even if it's 10% of the residents, that's nine people that if they have no place else to go will become Baldwin Park's homeless. Mm -hmm. Homeless around schools where our children are vulnerable. They trust us as elected officials to look out for the best of them. And so I ask that you please Please consider the safety of our students. You were elected by our community. We all were, and I'm here representing them, and as a voice of our teachers, our employees, our classified, the students, the after-school staff, you do not know what can possibly happen. And I understand the process is just allowing them to apply, but please look to other communities that have adult residential treatments. Find out, they have a lot of things going on. I can tell you of one story where I know an adult resident snuck out through the window, broke into a home next door, and assaulted a female. That is not something you can foresee, and that is a small adult residential. It is not nowhere near the size of this. This size uh, residential home is going to lower property values. People are not going to want to live in Baldwin Park, and we've always had a hard time changing people's perspective outside of our community. We have a great community. We have incredible people here. 
The perception has always been negative. This is going to make it worse. But I just ask that you understand that the revenue is not going to make up for the cost. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Lozada. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, moving along with public communication. Good evening. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello, good evening, uh, good evening. Mr. Lozano and um, the rest of the staff. Uh, first of all, um, my condolences for you and countless others that are not here. I saw your, your father at the ceremony. Oh, well, thank you. And he really shows prodigious results. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, for, the, for the record, mention your name like that. It's recorded. Your name. Leonardo Quesada. Okay, just so that. Okay, thank you. Uh, before you, see, before you make any further decisions on the approval of the Wayne Manor facility, have you done a current special status in depth where it shows the impact of this, this type of facilities that will not harm or jeopardize the safety of our children, especially near elementary schools? Mm -hmm. That's a question. Okay. Please consider a request of the opposition on the project of the Wayne Manor close to the ANSA school or any other. Thank you so much for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello. Good evening. Yo voy a hablar en español. Okay. Muy bien. Un momento, por favor. Did you want to go? Alejandra, table? Yes. Okay. Un momento, por favor. Uh, buenas noches a todos. Yo estoy aquí como residente de Baldwin Park y como madre de familia de la Escuela de Anza. Good evening to everybody. I'm here as a resident of Baldwin Park and as a parent of De Anza. Uh, aclarando la posición que tenemos uh, en la Escuela de Anza, no estamos, de no estamos en contra ni de las personas con enfermedades mentales, ni del lugar. Estamos en contra de la ubicación del lugar. Mm. I want to clarify our position our Deanza. We are not against any of the people with the disabilities or, or any kind of disability. We are in opposition with the location. Um, revisando un poco acerca de los derechos de los niños, tristemente busqué en, en internet y hay muy poca información acerca de esto. Checking on children's right, I checked on the internet and unfortunately there's very little information on this. Sin embargo, la, UNIF la UNICEF marca en su convención de 1989 como uno de sus principales principios. On the internet, I, I found that UNICEF marks a, a convention in 1989 marks like one of the main principles. Que el interés superior del niño es lo más importante. Y esto está en contra de cualquier decisión, ley o política que pueda afectar a un niño. Lo más importante es la seguridad de los niños. It points out that the superior interest of the child, it's um, not any, it's the decision, the, lay, the law or the political, or the, poli, the po, political that affects the children. Esto parece obvio. Sí, uno dice, sí, los niños tienen derechos, pero estamos viendo que en la realidad los derechos de los niños no están siendo considerados, y es una tristeza. This is obvious. We know that we say that the children have rights, but in reality they don't have rights. Este lugar representa un riesgo latente para nuestros niños. Uh, el mes pasado, diciembre 10 del 2015, Un, un paseo escolar que debería de haber sido lo más agradable resultó con situación trágica para un niño. This in reality is, uh, it's not good for our children. And back on December 10th, 2015, instead, we had a field trip. And instead of being a positive experience, it was something very negative for our children. Una persona este, indigente con problemas mentales atacó a un niño. Y este... 
esta criatura va a quedar con secuelas psicológicas, emocionales, que le van a durar de por vida. ¿Por qué quieren arriesgar a nuestros hijos a una situación de esas? At this time, a homeless person attacked one of our children. This is going to affect our child psychologically. It's going to affect them in the long run. Three minutes is up. Muchas gracias por su atención. Gracias. ¿Qué es su nombre? But, uh, with, with your name? Just... Josefina González. Okay, Jose, 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 Josefina. Thank you. All right, moving along. Okay, Mr. López. Good evening. Should I use this microphone? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, good evening, uh, good Miguel Lozano, uh, council members, uh, members of the cabinet. My name is Carlos Lopez, I'm the uh, vice president of the uh, Balboa Park Unified School District. And then uh, I'm here um, pretty much for the same uh, matter, which is the Wayne ma Manor. Uh, as uh, previously I have stated, I un completely understand that uh, uh, these people, they deserve a place to rehabilitate it themselves. Uh, as a disabled uh, person myself, I understand that they have all the rights and that the state, the state needs to have them a place to be. But please consider, consider um, uh, uh, another place to have this location. With all the respect, I, go, I wanna ask you uh, a question for all each one of you. And please, don't take me wrong or don't, uh, I don't want to misrespect you. Mayor, would you like to have one of these places with these people who are mentally ill next to your house or to any of the other members of the cabinet? I don't think so. We have a lot of, many, many, many other uh, places in Baldwin Park. We have a beautiful city in Baldwin Park where we can allocate these people. Once again, uh, I don't have anything, just like another, uh, the other person say, I don't have anything against uh, these people. They have the right to rehabilitate themselves. But who knows what's, go what's gonna happen if, it, if it one of them, they, you know, they, they get uh, uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, unstable, uh, unstable moment, and they throw some medicines uh, across the fence to the school. They're gonna be uh, medications. They're gonna be medicated. They're gonna be mo moms with little kids going across this facility, mornings and afternoons, and these people are gonna be riding and loose on the streets. So, please. When you, go to, when you go home and go to sleep, just think about this. Think about if it is the right thing to do and relocate this facility in another many, many, many places that we have in here in Baldwin Park. In another, I don't know, uh, might be a uh, industrial, might be commercial area. But please, not next to our younger people, not our youngest kids, I mean. We have a lot of young people, a lot of young kids that they are, that they are in high risk, risk of this uh, other people. So with this being said, I will truly appreciate if you can reconsider the, the location. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And then I'm sorry, I forgot to say I, my condolence for the loss of your, oh, thank of your you. father. Thank Mr. you, appreciate Sam. that. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Claudia. Un momento, vamos a traer una persona. ¿Qué es su nombre? Claudia Acevedo. Gracias. Uh, yo también soy residente de aquí de Baldwin Park y vengo también de la Escuela Alianza. Estamos muy preocupados porque creemos que no hay democracia aquí en Baldwin Park debido a a que recopilamos aproximadamente 600 firmas. 
Good evening. I'm also a resident here at Baldwin Park, and I'm here also on behalf of De Anza. I'm very worried because I believe that there is no democracy here in Baldwin Park. We have gotten approximately 600 signatures. Esas firmas son para que no se lleve obviamente a cabo el proyecto de Wayne Manor. Solo nos queda confiar en Dios que esto no suceda. Those signatures are against having the project the Wayne Manor. So the only thing we have is God. So that doesn't happen. Pero queremos estar seguros de que las opiniones de aproximadamente 500 familias sí cuentan. Gracias. Gracias, Sosta. We want to make sure that the signatures of 500 families do count. Yeah, thank you very much. Gracias. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, um, Council, and Cabinet members. Uh, my name is Roxanne Bickham. I'm with the American Cancer Society. I'm here on a little bit more of a positive note for you. Um, I would like to thank you on behalf of the American Cancer Society volunteers and staff. Um, we'd like to thank you for your guys' continued support for our local Relay for Life. Over the years, we've been able to raise hundreds of thousand dollars locally for local cancer patients. Uh, with this money, we've been able to provide free services, such as uh, we have the only 24-7, uh, 800 um, uh, number for cancer information, so people can call at any time. Uh, to be able to answer questions uh, regarding their diagnosis. Uh, we have our Look Good, Feel Better program, which uh, teaches women to deal with the changes in their skin and loss of facial hair and whatnot. They receive two to $300 worth of free cosmetics and then are able to take those home. We also have a free wig bank at my office in Pasadena where they can come and receive one free prosthetic. And these are just a few of the programs that we offer for free for um, cancer patients to help their cancer journey be eased um, just a little bit. Also, that money goes towards cutting-edge research. Um, some of that research has gone on to lead to the invention of the mammogram, the pap smear, some new medications such as tamoxifen and Herceptin um, that a lot of breast cancer patients are using uh, where it attacks just the cancer cell and not um, all of the good cells as well, such as the uh, traditional chemotherapy does. We've had 47 uh, society-funded researchers go on to win the Nobel Prize for their cancer research, so our money is being spent wisely. Um, all of this would not be possible without our grassroots efforts here at the local communities, which includes partnerships with entities such as yours. So with that, I would like to um, present the city of Baldwin Park with just a small token of our appreciation and to thank you for helping us fight a good fight. And I have a small... Um, or award for you guys. Thank you. Come on, come on up to the dais. I want to thank you very much. It's so important to be able to address this particular area as well. well, well come on up. You come up. And with that, I'd like to also acknowledge, I know that there's a lot of cancer survivors in the audience in particular. I know Mrs. Wood sitting over there. If there's any other cancer survivors, please raise your hand. We'd like to just acknowledge and... And, uh, and thank this organization because there's people like them that, you know, we can continue to do research and possibly find a cure. So nice. thank you for keeping up the fight for all of us. Yeah, let's get our, come on. Come on, Ricardo. Thank you very Thank much. You so they have cards? Uh, yes, I can grab one. Could you please? Nice you. Thank you. Very nice. Put it up in the office. Actually, we'll, we'll put it over at the uh, community center. We can put the community center. All right. Thank you very much. Chrissy, she's going to give you one of her cards for me. Thank you. She's going to go get it from me. All right. So moving along with public communication. Go ahead. Yes. Good evening, um, Mayor and other council members. My name is Irma Munoz, and I'm a resident of Baldwin Park for over 25 years. 
I'm also a concerned parent of the De Anza School neighborhood. We've met before in other meetings that we've had. And, um, and I'm here to recall the support that you promised us mm -hmm. when we met. And, and I think that that platform that you used helped you, with all due respect, to regain your office again in the city council. So I'm here to please uh, ask you to reconsider this building around the De Anza School. And, and um, also a, a point of interest that I, when I was listening to the news this evening, I'm thinking, you know, shouldn't we just like use common sense when it comes to these type of centers around schools? Mm -hmm. For instance, there was a pretty, um, person that almost attacked a young lady in the city of Pomona. Mm -hmm. That was on the news today, it's a public clock news. True. There was also another incident on um, a park where a person suffering from schizophrenia attacked with a hatchet, attacked a person in the park. And also, in the news today, they said that the homeless population in the United States is at its highest count. And that goes to show you here in Baldwin Park, all you need to do is look around 7-Eleven, around the um, Target area, around any street of Baldwin Park, especially in the De Anza area where you see a lot of homeless people. It's very sad to see all these people, but they're also with mental disabilities that could potentially harm our children and our residents. Just last week at the Barnes Park, there was a lady with mental problems dancing on a bench with no underwear. And kids were there playing around the park and they noticed all that. So those are just small things that we have to consider when it comes to our children's safety. And, and, and I am here to ask, with all the support of all the parents that are here, that's not everyone. And it's the same feeling all around with everyone. We care for our children and we care for the safety, and especially in that area of De Anza School. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Laura Gutierrez. Um, a parent. My daughter goes to De Anza Elementary. So she's a second grader. And I'm here in regards to the Wayne Manor project. Um, I'm with them. Um, I have no problem against the people with mental mm -hmm. illness getting help. I'm just not okay where it's at. Um, since I'm a single mom, I have to go to work from seven o'clock in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon. I have no time to pick up my daughter. And my neighbor's not allowed to pick up my daughter. My mom does it. My mom has to go walking all the way to De Anza, pick her up with my two-year-old niece and my four-year-old daughter. I don't want along the way for my mom to pick up my daughter, coming back, something bad happens. I don't want to be at night worrying about it if somebody's going to go in my house or not. As a parent, as most of you, I'm guessing you guys are, that's not something you want. You don't want to go to sleep every single night worrying that if something's going to happen. And I'm guessing that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, thank you. Good evening. How you doing? Good evening, Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, so to remind you, my name is Jacob Dunn, and I am the executive director of So Eden Organics, a nonprofit organization. I am also a medical marijuana user. Uh, I'm here tonight to urge the city council not to adopt the amendment to the municipal code banning medical marijuana delivery and cultivation. To begin, I trust that the city council uh, and the mayor receive my emails regarding the March 1st deadline error and to uh, insert an error into the Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act, otherwise known as the MRSA. In case you are not aware, the big error announced last month by Assemblyman Jim Wood was that the MRSA required local governments to develop regulations for the cultivation and delivery of medical marijuana by March 1st, 2016. Otherwise, the authority is relinquished to the state. Assemblyman Wood has come out on record saying, nobody intended to give local lawmakers such a short timeline to develop regulations for an industry as complex as medical marijuana. As of this week, 
Assemblyman Jim Wood's bill to remove the March 1st deadline from the MRSA was unanimously passed by the Senate Government and the Finance Committee, where it now waits the Governor's signature. Not knowing of this March 1st deadline error during this prior City Council meeting, it is certainly understandable that Baldwin Park did not want to give up its authority to regulate marijuana. As a matter of fact, the March 1st deadline was explicitly cited by the City Planning Commission and Mayor Lozano as a direct reason for quickly passing an amendment to the City's Municipal Code. Now that I have presently brought attention to this deadline error, I want to make it clear that I believe rushing to ban medical marijuana in Baldwin Park is very short-sighted, especially when legis a legislative deadline, one inserted into a bill in error, is the primary reason for the City Council's vote this evening. More importantly, by banning medical marijuana and amending the, the Municipal Code, the City is denying safe access to many sick people, like, for example, a lot of people with cancer, and we, which has come up tonight, um, and the list goes on for all these ailments. Anyways, the city is essentially telling these people who use marijuana as medicine to go fend for themselves on the black market to support their local dr illegal drug dealers, with, uh, which often have gang affiliations. On the other hand, regulated marijuana allows for an element of transparency, safety, and for safe access. It certainly doesn't drive people into the shadows like prohibition does. You have honest, trustworthy, and intelligent business people who are willing to work with the city of Baldwin Park on making marijuana more safely and more regulated um, and in compliance with state law. I am urging the City Council not to adopt the amendment to the Municipal Code out of a state of panic. At the very least, please consider a provisional permit program in which people like myself could apply in hopes to operate a medical marijuana business. This would allow the city to collect fees and to be very selective, ensuring business owners and employees of those businesses, businesses have clean records and have zero ties with criminal rings. In this way, Baldwin Park could take a hands-on approach and act as the leader in the San Gabriel Valley. There is no denying that there is a tremendous demand for legal marijuana in Baldwin Park and that this is not going to change anytime soon. So why not capitalize on this demand? Since when did more jobs in a burgeoning state industry become such a negative issue? Mayor, time's up. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate your time. <clears throat> Hello, City Council and residents of Baldwin Park. Uh, Mayor, Last month, I asked you if we were in debt. Now, listen to me. Maybe you can't hear. I asked you if we were in debt, and you stood up in front of all your relatives and everybody that voted you in, and you made a big issue out of it. You made me look bad, bud. But let me make you look bad. As of June 30th, 2015, which was what, seven months ago? You owe $17 million. That ain't all. And these are your reports. I know you don't look at them because you don't care. <clears throat> but you have another one over also. This one's a bigger one. And these people back here, well, few of you will pay, including me. You're $79 million in debt. And I ask you one simple question. I ask you, I don't think you remember. Are we in debt? You stood up in front of all these people. Gee. Also, Mayor, this manner, we have an, a lawyer for the other lawyer. You should read what they put in this print. Because the way it reads, you guys are going to pass this no matter what the heck these people say. And I'll tell you one thing. The trip to New uh, Washington, D.C. that you made, maybe you ought to make one to Sacramento and see if those people could change things around for these people. But I know you're going to say, oh, it's not behind my house. I don't care. I have one, two, three, four, five people that so claim supposed to live in Baldwin Park. Would you like this in your backyard? Think about it, folks. The mayor... Mrs. Rubio, Pacheco, Garcia, and Baca. Think about it. If all of you would like it in your backyard, if you do, raise your hand. We'll have those people run over there and put it behind your property. I'm pretty sure these people don't want it in their property. But boy, you're willing to give it away. I don't know how much money we're getting from this, but more likely, like everything else you guys bring to this city, nothing. Walmart, oh, by the way, did you guys read Walmart closed seven stores or something like that? No wonder they didn't close ours, huh? So.
But I'll tell you what, you people are going to learn the hard way. The economy is taking a dump a little bit right now. So if the economy doesn't recover, how are you going to pay all this money? These are your guys' records. You see them every day, and you probably go, ah, throw them in the trash. But this is, Mr. Mayor, you should go back and read this. I know you don't care, because if you did, when I asked you, you would have said, well, we're in debt to some amount. You call this line? This is your paperwork. This is your guys's. Excuse All me, time's you. up, please. There goes my three minutes. Good evening. I'm Robert Gregory. I teach at uh, De Anza Elementary School. The Ryan Manor facility is proposed to be built right next to the school. This makes no sense. When I began at De Anza 11 years ago, we had an enrollment of over 1,100 students. Now we're down to about 600 already. If you move that facility right next to the school, parents are not going to be attracted to send their kids to De Anza. Building Ryan Manor will not improve the situation. I'm not opposed to the facility, and, and most of the parents aren't either. It's just the location. It's as simple as that. Just move it somewhere else. We need a comprehensive environmental impact report to study this issue. We need to talk to the parents. Over 600 parents signed a petition about this, so there's strong support. They may not be here tonight, but there's strong support for this, to, to have it moved somewhere else. Baldwin Park needs more families to come into it to keep our schools strong. I urge you to, to think this through, do a comprehensive report, and do the right thing. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council and residents. Uh, my name is Elena Robles, and I'm here on behalf of Congresswoman Grace Napolitano. And I just want to um, congratulate you on your 60th anniversary, and um, I look forward to continuing to work with you. Uh, we have had many successful events in your city, like the World Boxing Council event last month yes, and our immigration clinic um, that we hold every year in your city as well. So we hope to continue doing that this year. I wanted to bring some exciting news. I, I am sure you already know about it, but I, I left a document uh, for each one of you, and I'll have some in the back as well. I uh, wanted to talk to you about um, H. 22, which is a bill. It's a, called the FAST Act, and it basically allocated $26 billion um, for California over five years for uh, transportation issues. Um, and I'm going to delineate the, the bullet points that I think are uh, match the city of Baldwin Park for you. Um, actually, it's $2 billion more than the current law, so we got $2 billion more, and that's all um, very much because the congresswoman is uh, the ranking member from California on the Transportation Committee, and she was able to to allocate um, more funds for that. Uh, the bill, uh, the bills that would be funded are, are bicycle, pedestrian, trail, and safe routes to school projects. It increases funding by five million of railway highway grade crossings, which are also known as grade <coughs> separations, which could probably benefit the city because of the trains. And it'll keep paratransit programs running, and the fares um, are kept low, um, as they're the lowest in the country. So the people with disabilities that take this transportation are able to go out and pay very minimal. So um, I'll leave copies with it, of this for everybody, but, and I encourage the residents, if they have any questions about this or any other issues or with federal agencies, to call our office at 626-350-0150 and to let us know um, how we could help you. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. John Reels, resident. Uh, the last minute I came to Rosano, you told me that I was taking down your signs and I was doing that, that I was on the other party and everything. No, I'm not in the, no other party. On the contrary, I took some signs to your office. The people from that house told me, can you get them out of here? And I took them to your office. Okay? So don't bring out that I took signs or I took it out. No, I did not. I know better. Okay? These people that are here, 
and what Mr. Luna said about the, how much the city owes. That's, those kids are the ones that are going to pay. Because of the mistakes you guys have done. We're talking around $80 million that we're in a bond issue type of a thing. We still have to pay it. You know. Some of the things that came out from meeting with people and stuff like that is that Mr. Pacheco told our residents, you better not take those signs down because it's against the law. It's not against the law. Okay? Everybody that I talk to, I see and everything, asked me, how in the hell, excuse the word, did they win? Another thing is, the schools are for the kids, not for soccer leagues or anything. The school grounds belong to us. They don't belong to soccer leagues. They can go ruin, ruin the fields. And you want to talk to the school district and having little parks in right there? No. We pay enough money into the school district for them to have some grass in their fields. If you ever gone to Olive School, Tracy School, most, most of the schools you have soccer people playing in it. They're, they're not children, they're adults. Okay. And you want to propose something to the school district for you, for our city to go into the school grounds? No. And like Manny said, Manny Carrillo said, pockets of parks. Excuse me, Mr. Rios, your time's up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, my name is Margaret by Socials. I live at, uh, um, near De Anza Elementary School, and I'm a mother, a stay-at-home mother with three kids. My youngest is five years old, kindergarten at De Anza, and the second is nine years old, uh, fourth year, I uh, um, fourth grader, and she's very intelligent. And she asks me, okay, every day she wants to walk from home to school, to school, to home. But I won't let her because of the fear of drug addicts, prostitution, okay, traffic, and vandalism around the area. Okay. I love Baldwin Park. I've been here for 13 years. Um, all I'm asking you is please don't, I mean, it will add up to the problem of what you have. I know. Thank you for the 79 million debt. I mean, we, we got that. You know, we enjoy Baldwin Park. That's what the, the debt you have is. We have a good uh, park, activities. We go there. But please do not sacrifice the safety of our kids. This, this adult, mental, disabled, we, we're not, I got nothing or we got nothing against them. But, the ability of those people to make sure these people won't go out in their place and harm our kids is, I don't know, unless they have a, a, a good security around the area, it's still, you know, our kids, I want my kids, I, I'm, I'm waiting one more year to pursue my career, you know, full time to go to work so that my kids can go from, from my my house, my home, to school without thinking, oh my God, you know, my kids is walking. Should I, should I call someone or should I pay someone $600, $700 just for my kids to walk from school to, to home? So please consider, reconsider. Um, it won't be another Flint, Michigan, where you sacrifice the kids' safety and health just to have 
and pay off our debt in Baldwin Park. So please consider, do no, no way manner, no mental adult rehabilitation or whatever near our school, near our kids, please. I want to go back to work <laughs> where I can let my kids go free. Thank you. Greg Tuttle, business owner. Um, I'd like to clear up a few things that the mayor had to say at the last council meeting when I was present. I'm not a thug. Your two brothers are thugs. They're drug dealers and they're gangbangers. Um, taking down your signs, the only thing that I did, and Mr. Rios is with me, a resident requested your signs down because you got no permission. We took them straight to your office. As far as your filming that you said you had, if you had had it, you would have taken it to Chief Taylor and says, arrest him. You didn't have it. You're all blow. Then your uh, yard signs fell down because they were cheap. The rain got them wet, and they fell down. So you keep putting more up. Nobody was going after you. We didn't have to. The, um, the thing that probably is the lowest thing that a politician can do is try to break up another family. And you succeeded, Mayor. You broke up the Baca family. But I can tell you, I met Mr. Baca, the father of Tony, and he would have nothing to do with you. He would not have represented you, and Tony would have been in the woodshed if he had been alive. So I hope you feel really proud of yourself, because that was really a dishonorable thing, what you did. Now, let's go on to Mr. Pacheco. He's upside down in his house. He needs money. He works very little. But he has a lot of buddies on consultants, and he wants to bring them into town. He's got a guy, California consultants, it's on the uh, agenda here to get approved. The guy used to be a state ex-state assemblyman. He was cited two times for picking up hookers in Fresno. This is the kind of people Mr. Pacheco brings in, just like when he goes to the green spa all the time. Now, what we need to understand is, is we don't need any more of your dirt here, Pacheco. And your housing people you bring in over across the street here and down by our work and you, and you make all these people to where it's going to be congested, you don't care. But we have an empty lot over by your house, but you don't want to build by you. Why? Because they're going to look in your backyard. So we have empty lots where housing can be, but because you want to go after Rubio's ideal and, and Baca's ideal on different ideals on things that would help the community, you're going to cram housing downtown again. And we've already got Rome, Section 8 coming in and everything else. Great job. You guys really did a stellar job. And when the traffic gets in here with all these people, I'm going to sit back and laugh because it's, it's going to be a joke. But I can tell you this, they're going to have a fight on their hand if they're going to even try any kind of development over by the industrial section of the city. So I hope that uh, you get your pockets lined because you're going to disappoint a lot of people like you did Montebello Housing when that came in and Montebello Housing found out that it wasn't worth the hassle. And I'm sure this developer is going to find the same thing when we come back together. We successfully got Bisno out of here, and we Mr. can get Mr. another Tuttle, smaller developer on. behind. Thank you very much. Very much. Appreciate that. All right. Moving along with public communication. Anyone else? Okay. If not, I will go ahead and declare the public communication closed. Let me just, first of all, I, I want to start out 2016 uh, with, with, a, with a positive note. And before my dad passed away, I asked him what he, because he when he was here, I asked him about the three individuals that I addressed. My dad has always, all his life, been a very balanced and neutral person. If he doesn't have anything good to say about him, he just won't say it. And, and one thing that I did learn from my dad is you better have that document before you go up there and stand up and say something. Prove it. Just don't say it. And his opinion about all three of you, he just simply said, again, that's the way my dad was, even before he passed away, he said, yeah, interesting individuals. But I'll tell you one thing, one thing, Ricardo, that my dad did laugh, and he was in the hospitals, when I told them that they're known as the Three Stooches. That my dad did laugh about. Now, let, 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 and, and, uh, let me just let the audience so that everyone knows that the, the Constitution of this country is so awesome 
that allows each and every one of you, each and every one of you, to come up here, to come up here and outright lie in public. The individual walking out here knows that. He takes advantage of it. He is, and I'll say it straight out, fabricates the information and has no validity whatsoever. This is the way he works. Again, the Constitution allows you to come up here to call me or anyone up here, including the chief, all the way here, outright, just create any type of story. Both of the three individuals, specifically the last one here, who's not a resident of Baldwin Park, who ran, who ran as the mayor of the city of Baldwin Park, signed off on the paper. Now, I could have easily taken him to the district attorney's office because he signed under perjury. He perjured himself. He claimed he lived down the street from me. I went and asked. No one even knew who he was, not even the community dog in that area knew who he was. So that's the things that he could do. This person, that the last one that came up here, he is a congenital liar, and he knows that because I labeled him that because that fits him. This man is very selective. Notice how he only came and targeted you know, specific people. That is what he does. He is a special interest, including Mr. Luna, all these individuals, uh, Mr. Tuttle, and what's the third person's name? Reels. They're special interests. They have interest in profiting as well with some of their friends out there. But because they lost the majority, no, now they're not going to be able to give money to their little friends. But again, just to let everyone know, you could go to any city and accuse any of the elected officials, whether it be the state or even the president, an outright lie. The Constitution protects you, allows you that right. So just so that everyone knows here, because all three of these individuals, as they're better known as the three stooches, they fit, they fit, the, actual, they fit the actual mode itself, and that's what they are. And I will publicly say here, all three of you have fabricated and lied. And the thing is, you have no respect for the youth that are here. You could care less because you don't live here. And that's the sad part about it. As elected officials, we live here. I live here. All of us live here because you're required. You're mandated wherever throughout the country, and that's the case. Now, as I made very clearly about the Wayne Manor, this is a process that the, the state of California mandates that we allow the process. Now, if we prohibit the law, if we pro were to prohibit it, then it will default on its own and it becomes the actual, that we would have to allow it to come to the city of Ballin Park. We have our own opinions and where everyone's is going to be here when the decision is going to be ultimately made. I want to make that very clear because you have these three little individuals out there, of course, spreading their little lies and rumors because that's what they're good at. They're, that's what their specialty is. And I can't do anything about that. So I want to let all the residents know that uh, very clearly uh, here today. So, and you know what? Whatever they do, and they're going to continue on, this is, this is what they do all the time. They have nothing to do other than come here first and second uh, uh, meeting of the month because they have nothing else to do. So just want to let everyone know. So at this point, um, I, yes, let, Council Member. Let me just add uh, something. These three individuals that come each, each meeting for last couple of years will come here and just fabricate statements they make a lot of information and they'll twist it a lot of it isn't true I am not bankrupt this individual has lied and said that about here I mean he ran three candidates in this last election he ran Cruz Baca for mayor and two other candidates and the outright lost the people didn't want them in office Cruz Baca was bankrupt twice but he doesn't come in and say that because he wants to attack me now I hate to bring that up but if this is going to continue, I'm going to point out a lot of the negative that he and his candidates have brought up and aren't are true, and they lost their election, and they're upset and angry, and they're up here at every meeting now just fabricating a number of lies. Okay, the city is not bankrupt. The city is not broke. Okay, the city is, is stable. And all those documentations, you could ask our finance director uh, about that. Look up all the information you want. We are not bankrupt. Okay, now they're taking advantage of all of you and saying that this city council is trying to support this project. Anybody who buys a piece of land, and you can look this up on the internet, if you buy a piece of land and you want to put a project on there, like this, these gentlemen do, they have to follow a process, and we have to allow them to follow that process. And right now they're going, they bought the land, they want to do this project, and we as a city council, we're like the judges, we have to allow the process to go through and give our opinion. So right now, we are at the CEQA pro process, okay? The California Environmental Quality Act. 
pick up item number 10 of the agenda, read through it. This is not saying that this board here is going to approve this project. We have to go through the process. Now get involved in the CEQA uh, process. Now I called individuals, members that are here in the audience to tell them about this so that they could get involved in the CEQA, CEQA process and comment on the CEQA process because the CEQA process allows a public hearing and that's where they're going to take your input. Now these individuals, they don't talk like that. They don't want to tell you that. They want to make it look as if we're approving something here and that's where they're outright liars. Mr. Tuttle, who lives in Pomona, who's a Volkswagen mechanic, will come here and he gives a good talk, but he doesn't have any background, any training on, on, on any businesses or how to run anything. He'll just come here and convolute everything. He wants to take control of the city because he's a lobbyist. He represents a number of companies that if they happen to get in, will fill his pocket. So be careful of these individuals. So I'm telling you, look at CEQA, okay? It's the California Environmental Quality Act. Educate yourselves on that. The teachers that are here, get together and talk about it. Matter of fact, I'll have staff uh, uh, talk to you about that so you can all understand what CEQA is. That is the next step that we are on. And that is your tool that you're going to use to bring up your objections to this project. That's how the process works. That's by law by the state of California. Now, as the mayor said, if we all voted no on this thing and did not allow them to go through the CEQA process because they're paying for this process. We're not going to hire staff to do the CEQA process. You know, the staff, we could hire people and they'll do the CEQA process, but, but typically the, the developer, we're having him pay that fee. It's $29,000. Okay. So read this staff report that these gentlemen try to, try to, you know, take advantage of you guys and not tell you the truth. Read this document. Call City Hall. Call Amy Harbor, our planning, uh, uh, director and ask her a question or, or ask, uh, Mark here, our, our, uh, our director of, of, uh, of environmental planning. Ask them, we'll, we'll do this. But, you know, matter of fact, uh, later on, I request that the staff does a, a CEQA process so that, uh, that all of you understand the process and how you get involved at this level to be able to give your concerns on this project. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Mayor, Gabriel. can I have a few yes. words? Yes, Councilman Susan Rubio. Thank you. Les queremos agradecer por tomar el tiempo de venir a expresar sus preocupaciones. Se los agradecemos mucho. Sí, los seguimos escuchando y que queremos expresar que nos preocupa igualmente. Sus hijos son nuestros hijos. Ah, simplemente son maestras. Yo entiendo al maestro que vino a hablar aquí, que no nos, no paramos de preocuparnos porque salen de la escuela. Nos seguimos preocupando hasta que lleguen a sus casas. Pero los vamos a seguir escuchando y gracias por estar aquí. Thank you for being here, all of you. We just want to share that we do care about your children. Your children are our children. And as a teacher, and as a teacher knows, we don't stop worrying about your children just because they leave our classroom. So we continue to listen to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor I'd Thank like you, to Council Member. Uh, uh, Cruz Baca. Yo también les quiero agradecer. Yo he estado en muchas juntas con ustedes y saben que estoy apoyando siempre los niños y, y lo que pasa en, no nomás en nuestras escuelas, pero en nuestra comunidad. Y también le quiero pedir disculpas porque hay comentarios que hizo el concejal Pacheco que son muy personales y que no deberían de estar. Si él tiene algún problema con los señores que se pararon a hablar, no tiene nada que ver conmigo. Muchísimas gracias. Yeah. No, no, hold on, hold on. No, I'm not going to allow you to, no. No, Cruz Baca, this is his campaign manager on the 460 forms, on the 460 forms. He gave this lady a, a, a lot of money, 1500 for her campaign, and then at the end, they're giving money to her. Yes, Cruz, I know, that's true. I know, I'm just telling you, be careful with this lady, okay? And it's important, it's important, it's important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is true. Please, I'm speaking, you can speak at the next one. Okay, I'm telling you the truth. As you get into the sequel process, yes, that is the key. Look at the sequel process. Don't be fooled by these gentlemen here telling and trying to throw rocks wherever it is. Okay, and Cruz Baca should be talking about sequel, not out here trying to distort, getting her people to come up here and and start to go after council members that because she lost the election. Now she's coming after everybody else. Cruz, that's wrong. And that is a dirty politician. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thank excuse you. me. Go ahead. Excuse me. This past election became very personal, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. That I am in support 
of making sure that our children are safe. This has nothing to do with you accusing me of a bankruptcy or of my brother and my sister coming to support Mayor Lozano. This has nothing to do with that. Honest. The election's over. You won. Get over it. What I am saying is that I want to be sure that the people know that I am in support and have always been in support, whether the meetings are at 7 o'clock in the morning or whether they're at 5 o'clock in the evening. I have not seen you at some of those meetings, Ricardo. I've seen Mayor Lozano. He's been there with me. But I've never seen you at any of the meetings, not only with the mm. De Anza, but at Sierra Vista Junior High the other day and a lot of the schools. And I want to end this conversation because I, I believe that these people want to go home at a decent hour. And you and I can continue this conversation at another I, time. I agree, Please. I agree, but I don't want you to mislead the public and have your people come here and make statements on your behalf because that's wrong, Cruz. They are not they wrong. My I'm people. Not, excuse me, but I'm talking. They I, are I not my you, people. I, hold on, hold on, one at a time, one at a time, please. I heard you speak, and I go to every meeting that I, I can attend. I can't attend meetings in the middle of the day because I work. Okay, I don't know if you work or not, but I do. But I have work, and there's people in the audience that will attest that I've gone to meetings in the afternoon. When I can't attend those meetings, I attend. I've been in the city council for a long time. I've supported the public on a lot of issues. I've been a one to four in city council on issues, and I've always fought for the right of the public. I'm going to make sure that the public uh, gets, you know, that our children have safe programs and that all, everything that we do for them is in their best interest. But I'm not going to be, you know, lying to them. And again, you should be talking about the CEQA process. You're avoiding talking about it. And that's where these, that's where we need to go next with this process. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank Mayor. you. All right. Yes, yes I, I just want to say that it's really sad that, um, you know, this, this um, issue is becoming one that pits people against each other. We are all on the same page. All of us have expressed concern about this project. We've heard you. We, ag we agree with you. I agree. This is not a, 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 the right location for this type of use next to a school. And we all have expressed concerns about this project. What Council Member Ricardo Pacheco is saying is that by law, these developers or these property owners have the right to go through a process. Now, going through that process, we will have the opportunity to make decisions. You will have the opportunity to come out to these meetings, to come out to all the hearings, and I encourage you to do that because we are on, we, we have heard you. We want to continue to hear you. We want you to be involved in this process. And we, I, I think at the end of the day, will be on the same page. I think that we, we, we definitely have the same concerns that you have. So it's sad to see that you know, one group is, is being pitted against another, and this is what Council Member Ricardo Pacheco is talking about. Please be wary of the fear tactics. Please be wary of the political agendas and the political puppets that are associated with certain candidates that ran for office. I think that's all he's saying. We hear you. We support you. I agree that that is not the right location. But the applicant has the right to go through the process. That's what will happen. Come out to every hearing. We'll be here. Come out to the Planning Commission hearing uh, when that happens. And just keep an eye out. You know, let's, let's stay in communication on this issue. Uh, but please, let's not be divided on this. We're on the same page. Thank you. Right. May I like Thank to say you. something, please? No, no, you're the city council only. So do, do it at the end, okay? okay. So, all right. Mayor, yes. I, I do want to let the people know that when Mayor Lozano and myself met mm -hmm. in October at Barnes Park, mm -hmm. we did go over the whole process, the CEQA, what was going to be coming up, how it had to go through the channels of planning commission, and I believe that we explained and took a lot of time, we were there for at least two or three hours, explaining the whole process. Um, a lot of you were there, so it's not where I'm hiding behind something, I have no agenda. Again, I repeat, I want the safety of our children. I want for everyone to be able to walk home from school the way I did many years ago. Why can't we do it now? What's so different about maybe riding your bike or your skateboard or whatever it is so that you can get from point A to point B, especially for working parents, that it's so difficult to pay for daycare. So I am, and I agree with Council Member Garcia, we are all on the same page. We are looking out for our community and for the safety of our 
our children. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move to a consent calendar, and I will pull, uh, actually, do we have the, um, for this one, for the contract? Is it on here? Okay, I'm going to pull item number 11 for revision. Councilman, wish to pull any other item? 7 and 13, please. 7 and 13, okay. Is that Rubio? 7 and 13. No, uh, reports of officers, that's separate, 13 oh, separate. Sorry. So just number 7. And then uh, do we need to pull item 5, conduct a reading of the... All right. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm going to go to item number seven, <clears throat> requested by Councilmember Susan Rubio, adopt resolution number 2016-108 and resolution number 26 to authorize the city participation in. Uh, go, uh, go ahead, Councilmember. No. Yes, Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Council. I just want to see. There's some money here um, that can give us more information on this. I read it, but I would like to ask some questions. So, who's handling this item? What is? I mean, number seven. Oh, yes, okay. number seven. I do. Yes, Mark, can you just share a little bit about the program and how it works? Thank you. Yes, the, actually, the council already approved a very similar program, which is the HERO program, the HERO program a couple of years ago, which is uh, consistent with the, with the uh, uh, incentive for a solar energy program and uh, energy efficient program. What it is, is that it's a company that actually uh, coordinate and provide the link between the property owner and the, uh, the contractor, whereas the property owner get oh, substantial yeah, subsidy know. for entering into, for, to, to make some improvement on their home to either install some solar panel, solar system, or energy efficient system into their home. The contractor actually does all the paperwork to receive the subsidy and, and, the, and the discount from the state and pass on those, those discounts to the property owner, where the property owner does not have to do any paperwork or any, any, uh, any, anything, and all they do is getting a receiver discount on their cost. Thank you. Just some of the concerns that I had, and I understand that it's not a city responsibility, that third party will handle everything, but according to the paperwork or the, the report, um, we're basically handing over our residents to be able to participate in this program, correct? Um, is there any educational programs to educate the residents on the, uh, on the issues and how they can participate? Yes, there is a lot of information out there. Actually, we already have a lot of information on our website right now with regard to the HERO program. This will be added to the HERO program. If they have exactly the same term, it's very highly regulated by the state and the information is already provided out there. One thing to say also is that the program has already been approved by the county and that's something that people have been vetted, and the contractor actually do have to do some training with the, 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 with the white, green, uh, white Green organization in order to be able to provide the services. And, you know, and I think it's a great program. My concern is that I know that we have a large population of Spanish speakers that may, perhaps may not understand what this really means, and I know it goes into... Um, you know, the, the residents taking out loans and being responsible for the loan and then having the tax at the tail end. And I'm thinking if they're going to be taxed, do they really understand? And now, I'm not saying they're not educated, but sometimes things get lost in translation. So I just want to make sure since we're not going to be responsible and we're handing it over, is there any way that we can keep tabs on, on you know, how the program is working, who they're reaching out to? Yes. And just to ensure that we catch the glitches, at least, again, with that population that may not understand and speak English, I want to make sure that they're not caught off guard and, and maybe present it to them in a way that it sounds good and they don't understand that they will be taxed and they will be responsible for, for that payment at the end. Yes, and actually we already have some uh, uh, written material at City Hall right now in multiple languages, actually, I think in five or six different languages about the program that explain all the, the demarches they would have to do. You know what I would like to see, just because, I, like I said, it's a great program, and I think it's you know completely worth it, but I really would like to see we can put some kind of forum together and invite the residents that may want to participate, just so we're fully aware of you know, the information that they're getting and that they understand it and know how it works, and just sort of for us to be a little bit vigilant to make sure that they, they really understand the benefits, but also the downfalls, and you know, they need to be able to afford 
what they're getting into or else they might end up in trouble because I do know that even though we're not responsible, the third party can go after them for not paying and, and that kind of stuff. And we don't want to see our residents somehow getting into a hole where they, they can't afford to pay something that they got into. So that's my only concern. You're thank welcome. you. Um, thank you, Mark. <laughs> Could I make just one comment, if that's all right? Sure, uh, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe, I, and I want to sort of uh, elaborate or expand on what Councilmember uh, Rubio was saying. Maybe if we had some type of a, of a workshop and also include our Asian community that's growing all the time, so that that way, um, you know, the, the, maybe have the, the company, the representative Representative come and speak to our, our community and what the services are that they'll be able to um, that they'll be able to offer to them so that the community can can make a decision and they'll know when they come to them I, I know it's more work and something else on your plate but I think that that way uh, it would be clear for for the community or the people that want to be involved in the program or take advantage of it no we, we definitely will ask why green to make uh, an outreach presentation to the community absolutely okay thank you Mayor, I'd like to move to approve item number seven, please. Second. Right. Oh, I got it. All right, thank you. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, real quick, let me just correct something uh, the city clerk uh, brought up to my attention. About second, the, let me go ahead and the, uh, move the consent calendar with the exception of items number seven um, and 11. So that's my motion. Second. 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 Any objections? See none, so move. And All then right. I move to approve item number seven. Okay, I'll go ahead and second. Any objections? See none, so move. All righty. So we'll go over to item 11, uh, which is the approval of the employment contract with Rose Tam for the position of Director of Finance. Rose, you over there? Great. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, re revise this, <clears throat> which is the item number two, the correction of finance. Uh, director's salary uh, will, go, uh, will be at $143,435 per year. All right. So at this point, I'll go ahead and make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Any objections? See none. So, so we have adopted and this will be revised. All right. Okay. So at this point, we'll now go over to reports of officers, considerations of contract for grant writing uh, firms. I, uh, Mayor, yes. I'd like to pull item 13 for uh, clarification. All right. Very good. Okay. So item 13 is being pulled. Yes. Con uh, go ahead, Councilmember Guzbaca. Um, it, it seems like there there needs to be some type of clarification. At the last council meeting, uh, when uh, the representative from California Consulting came up, one of my questions was is that, and I believe that it was Council Member Rubio that also had some comments about the grants that they had worked on for our police department. And as I had stated, some of our departments work very diligently at, at doing the grants in-house. Um, I know that uh, the Del Sol uh, Consulting has included the police department, and I feel that at this time uh, we have in-house that can do that unless they can prove that there are certain programs or show us or bring to us that there are certain programs that they could enhance whatever our police department may need in regards to whatever they can't throughout in-house or with the asset forfeiture monies. I would like for there to be clarification and for the contract to be for a six-month period um, and also to see if maybe if we if we are going to be excluding the police department for Del Sol if we could also if we could lower their fee because it seems that uh, within a one-year period uh, the two consulting firms will be making close to a hundred thousand dollars if we did it in-house or hired someone even at $60,000 a year with their benefits, it would be under the $100,000. So I would like to see if we could have some cooperation and see if some of the fees could be lowered and also for only a six month period to see if this grant is working and if what grants are they going to be bringing to the table as far as some of the parks and rec and see if we can do some of it in house. Right. Uh, Mayor, any, what, yes. what I would suggest is I know that a lot of time uh, when staff, uh, there's a lot of grants that, that aren't taken care of. Staff has a lot on their plate, and there's nobody that's really just focused on grants and getting them through and follow them through the process. And I, in my experience, I've seen that a lot of times grants don't either don't get picked up or, you know, we never hear about the ones that didn't get, that did, we didn't get. So it's important that we try this route and try to get uh, a groups that are going to really understand the grant process and go through. We'll give them a trial run. Uh, they're supposed to report back, I think, under this report in, in uh, six months. They have a review. Initially, when they get um, the contract, uh, within, I think, within uh, 30 days or so, they have to identify 
award grants that you know that we have. Um, you know, these are month-to-month -month grants. So at any time we feel they're not performing, uh, you know, even though it's a year, but but at some point we feel they're not performing, uh, we can discuss it here, and they'll be bringing us reports as to how they're doing and how their grants are coming along. Grants take, as you know, many months to to go through, and uh, you know it's important that that they're the ones processing the grant and tracking them through the process, making sure that that we get the grants that uh, you know that the city deserves. I think there's a lot of grants out there. But we don't have a focus group that's that's doing them. So I would, um, yeah, I would approve these contracts. I just have a clarifying yeah. question, if if I may. I I, I, I just heard um, Councilmember Pacheco saying that it's month to month, and we can terminate. Uh, maybe I'm, I read it wrong, but I thought I read the contract as a year contract. Am I wrong? Yes. Yeah, no. It is a twelve month contract. So, Council Member Ricardo, but are you saying you want to, you're willing to make it month to month? What you have before you are two proposals from the firms. <clears throat> Staff was looking at if you're going to commit to um, a monthly retainer that you look at a six to nine to twelve month period. Um, what we could do if you have um, alternate choices for a contract is we would bring that specific contract language back. And we could, if oh. you wanted to propose um, a contract with a 30-day uh, out clause for each party, and that's something we can also look at putting in there. Okay, so right now, how is it read? Uh, it's just 12 months? 12 if, months. It would be based on the yes. council's direction. And yes, if you want to direct oh. us to go for the 12 months, that's what we could commit to. No, I, I would just I'd make less. a motion to approve them as is. As is is one year, correct? It's a one year, yeah. Oh. I didn't know. It, I thought it was month to month. That's fine. And did you want to include a w without cause clause to terminate? Is that in there right now, or how is uh, that? Yes, that's as, as it's. Can proposed. you put it in now, or yes, we, we can put it in now. Okay, put it in now. All right. So there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? Can I just ask for one oh, small ahead. change, if Discussion? I may? Um, I think that I saw a contract to it states that they can report back um, every from six to nine months. I really like it if we can work with them to see maybe we can have them come back every three months at least so no. we can keep tabs on you know on what's on the table. I do recognize that grants take a while and it you know it takes a little while to get them, but at least we know what's on the table, what they're working on, and uh, and maybe we can give input as to maybe what direction they want to go. I know that there's a lot of need in the city and we can possibly suggest things as we go. But going from a nine month reporting period to a three. I would really appreciate it. We can add that instead. I think that's, that's good. I, I agree. And also, I would like that for them to be available in case we would like to meet with them and maybe bring in suggestions. Um, I work very closely with, uh, like I had said at the last council meeting, uh, with someone that puts together grants for the city of Los Angeles. And sometimes uh, certain things come across my desk at the school where I work. And um, they're not available to us because we're a private post secondary. But they are available for for municipalities as well as for schools, uh, public schools. So if I could please have that, if they were available for them to meet with me when something like that comes up and I can suggest it to them, that would be great. All righty. Okay. And also, and also the fee for Del Sol. I'm sorry. Fine. I I see California Consulting's fee is like thirty nine fifty, and they've been around a long time, from which all of us know. Um, Del Sol. Um, I, I would like to see a little longer track record and see if it would be possible for them to lower their fee, please, to sort of match California Consulting's. Um, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. All right. So at this point, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Any objections? See none. So Mayor, but are we yes. adding the, the we, amendments, yes. or how are you making that motion? Well, we're making the motion as is. Unless, well, let me go. Let me go back. So that's yes. what your suggestion is. To I'm to suggesting, and I see Mr. Solano over there shaking his head yes when I suggested to lower the fee. Okay, to be equal to the yes, return. to be equal to uh, California Consulting. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Is that is that a viable? Okay, I'll tell you what, let, let's just keep it the same, because then we're going to start negotiating back and forth. Let's just keep it as is, but we'll put in the, the three-month okay. review period, or what did you report? No, but, oh, he's, but he, I'm sorry, but he's, but he's uh, Mr. Solano is willing to, to work yeah. in conjunction with the same fee as California Consulting, and I think that that's very amicable uh, right. well, well, agreement he said, he said here. Okay, so at this point, let's just leave, leave them both equal. So, so it would be at 4000 but well, he's no, at 39 so it's $50 more. 
<laughs> okay, but I mean, you know, they, it's they, a they, they, have cruise, cruise. They, they have staff to support. I mean, let's face it, that you know, the, these things are difficult. I mean, I don't know if they want to speak to you. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to leave that four. We're going to leave that four equal. That's what we'll do, both of them. All right? Okay. Then we'll review them because we do have that clause. He's anyways, not asking right? for 4000 and you're what giving you? him more money. <laughs> no, where is it at right now? Is it 30, 39, is it? 39 right? Okay, so we'll leave both of them at 3900 That's what we'll do. So we'll leave, and leave them there. And how about the three-month? The no, three month we'll we'll period. Is that Okay. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll put that in there, and then we'll, we, if anything happens, we, we're able to opt. That's that's what was recommended. So at this point, I'll go ahead to uh, a motion uh, to to adopt both of them at equal at 3,900. That's my motion. Second. Any objections? See none, so move. All right. Thank you. Hold on. Can I get a yes, read from the, from the city manager as to what he understands the direction was? Yeah, my understanding is the motion is to approve uh, the two contracts at $3,900 a month with a 30-day out clause and to report back every three months. And there's also, I believe, a $200 monthly. What is that expense for? Those are um, some reimbursables if they uh, pay for postage or copies, and that is a maximum amount. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to the... The 30-day uh, uh, out clause would have to come back to the council, right? That's, that's correct. Okay. And I, I just want to say thank you so very much for, for working with us. I really appreciate that. All right, so item number 14 and 15, can we bring that back? What's 14 and 15? For approval I'll of second the resolution. that okay. if you make the motion. Fifteen the appointments, and uh, all right, so the, the, uh, my motion is second. Any objections, seeing none, so move. All right, at this point, we also will go over to the uh, consent calendar, which we have the uh, approval of the uh, recognized obligation payment scheduled up, uh, for the period from July 1st, 16, to the 17th administrative budget. Do we have anything here? Do we need a motion for this? Yes. All right, so I'll go ahead and move for a motion. Any objections? Seeing, uh, was seconded by Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move for a gentleman of the regular city council meeting. Okay. Oh, hold on, Mayor. I just have one request as, uh, under oh. council request. Is I would like to uh, uh, have staff uh, bring back a, uh, a report to discuss uh, doing a CEQA uh, uh, overview oh. with those at De Anza. Okay. You could have... Um, uh, in the evening, invite uh, the students of DeAnza and, and their parents and go over the CEQA process so they have a thorough understanding with them, um, make sure that there's handouts and all the information required so that they understand that process. And I have one uh, also for um, Bros Tam, Finance Director. Um, we've been emailing back and forth, but I do want to confirm tonight, if at all possible, an audit committee meeting for February the 2nd, if we can do that at 4 o'clock. I know that the third was, uh, I believe that um, the CEO, Shannon Yahtzee, is not available. Um, so I wanted to see if we could please confirm that. I have, um, I have to be out of town a lot in February, and I want to be sure that I can make that because it's very important for us to go over a lot of things at the beginning of the year. Oh. The mic. The mic. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. The button. Button on. Okay, that's a, go ahead and yell. Here. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I had a long conversation with the auditor firm. Uh, actually, they request for an uh, extension to postpone the meeting. And I will update you uh, once we get an answer back from them. Okay. Mm. They are waiting for the partner's response. <coughs> Oh, that's right. We want the partner here. That was my request. Yes, I forgot. I'm sorry, Rose. That's okay. true. That was my request. I will follow up with them tomorrow again. Okay. Already? Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Right. Sorry. Thank you for reminding Mayor, me. Mayor, if I may? Yes, go ahead. What I wanted to say earlier, sorry about that. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank the, the families uh, from the ANSA and the board members that came in to speak um, earlier, oh, yeah. working for the school district, a lot of times the parents come in and, and know they don't understand the process, so it's good that you did explain that. Yeah. It is a process that it has to go through, but you can understand yeah, they're, they're afraid because they're afraid for their children. So I wanted to thank them for coming up and speaking up because I do work with them also, mm -hmm. and they brought concerns to me also. So it's good that you clarified that it is a process for them. 
And the more information we give them, I think they'll be a little more at ease. That's what awesome. I wanted to ask. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. This one, I'd like to move for adjournment of the regular city council Second. meeting. Any objections? None. So move. This one, I want to move the the next item that I want to bring up: the Charitable Relief Foundation, the BPCRF. Let's move that to the following meeting. I know we need to pick individuals to sit on this as board members. I'll okay. second. Uh, second. Any objections? Yes. None. So move. At this oh, point, excuse, I'm sorry, Mayor. Yes. Is there Fine. a deadline that we have to have that up and flying, oh, David? Oh, good question. Um, the um, uh, Baldwin Park Charitable Relief Fund is already up and operating because the five. Me, uh, oh. Board members are